further than, but today I would like to ask you to focus on the insert and say in unison with me the first two passages of Scripture, Psalm 51 and then Matthew 5, and then I will read Ephesians 5 and select the verses there. But together, if you will join with me in the saying of Psalm 51, verse 10. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new in my spirit within me. And then Matthew 5, verse 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. And then I invite you to hear these verses from Ephesians 5, verses 1 and 2, and then 15 through 20. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and live in love. As Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Be careful then how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of time, because the days are evil. So do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk for wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. As you sing songs and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything. In the name of our Lord, Jesus Christ, we pray with you. Almighty God, as we gather on this blessed Easter morning, we again want to draw closer to you, to know you more completely and fully, that we fully might appreciate what the celebration of this morning is. And so as we do that, I ask that the words that I speak might be consistent with your will for us today. And that if anyone needs to hear a different message, that you might speak directly to their heart, mind, and soul that they may be aware of the love, care, peace, and comfort that you offer in this morning. For it is in your Son's name that we pray. Amen. Don't you love it when God answers prayer? Amen. I was praying, if you weren't paying attention, if your mind wandered, as mine does sometimes too, I prayed and I mentioned that it was a little warm in here, and magically, the breath of fresh air came over me, and it was cool. And it might be a little too cold now. But, but it is exciting to see how God works. And sometimes God answers prayers for us in ways that we want. And then sometimes God doesn't always do what we want. Isn't that true? I could title this sermon the Terry Brewer Sermon. He's the one that is, that's the motivation for the title for our hymn today, which of course is, In My Heart There Rings A Do you all know that song? In My Heart There Rings Okay, now he's doing a good job. Everybody that wants to hear Terry come sing a song, say Congregational use. 
Now, at first service, we had a little help from someone said, it's in my home. But there is this thing called copyright license. And what goes along with that is another word called ethics. And so I tried to get permissions to make copies so we could have it in the, in the worship bulletin today. And it's kind of complicated. There's a couple of publishers involved in this. And I turned to the first one, and they declined my request pending what happened from the other publisher. So we didn't get, get it in the bulletin today. But we sang it a little bit anyway, right? <laughs> we sing that song we celebrate today on Easter, what it is to truly have in our heart a melody, to have something worth singing about, to have something that helps us to move through life. How many of you all are going through life pretending that you are living in a Broadway musical? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're always kind of singing something. You're always kind of humming, uh, humming something as you're going along. How many of y'all have ever sung in a car driving down the road? How many of y'all have ever laughed at anyone singing in their car? <laughs> That's why I have to sing on the highways. Moments where I want to be able to have things like a little bit of anger, a little competition, 
a little bit that's about me, not so pure. But we're called to have this type of a pure, godly heart, to have this melody within us. Super Bowl 25 took place at the time of the first Gulf War. And choir sang in first service today, so I had the chance to hear from Pete Tucker that he was actually overseas in Desert Storm and saw Whitney Houston singing the national anthem from that place. Scud missiles overhead. Does that change how you hear a song? Right? But Whitney Houston stood up there and, and sang that song and she wore, remember that sparkling gown she wore and all the, the skin that was exposed? No. She went out, make your mind, she went out and sang the national anthem in a cat suit that was red, white, and blue. And the camera did a close-up on her, and she was dripping sweat. And what many of you already know, just the nature of what is the Super Bowl, the song was actually pre-recorded and played at the stadium. And so she didn't have the earpieces in and some of the other. But one of the things when they were making the recording, which by the way, they did in one take. Talent. They did it in one take. But before they did, she talked about how she wanted to do it, but she wanted to do it slower than normal. And they said, no, we want you to speed it up. And Whitney Houston said, Nobody tells me how to sing. <laughs> and so she sit, stood up there and she sang in her way. And then in front of the Super Bowl crowd, she appeared to give that rendition, which moved and stirred the people that were in the stadium as well as those who were watching it. <clears throat> and in such an intense moment where even the sports broadcast centers we're not inside the stadium, but outside the stadium because of the terrorist threat. Instead of having the Goodyear blimp in the air, in the air, the Blackhawks <coughs> were flying overhead. And then before the game started, F-16s roared across the sky, representing the branch of the military service known as the in Midwest City, Oklahoma. That sense of pride in our nation, that sense of unity, that sense of strength, that harmony that came from her singing that song. When is the last time you felt that singing a song in church? When is the last time you were that excited, you were that passionate that you sang a song and you wanted to do that? Yes! Where you meant it. Now, no offense, I don't really want to see many of you all dancing in church. I don't know what it would look like. But I hope in your heart you are dancing to that melody. Do we have difficult days? Of course. Are we a bunch of perfect folk here? Far from it. But we still have the melody within us that moves us to more, that reminds us of who we are that reminds us that God sent his son for our behalf and that it's something worth getting excited about. Amen? Amen. That it's something worth getting energized about. Amen? Amen? That it's worth going out and having lunch and overstuffing yourself. Amen? Amen. And then asking God for forgiveness for gluttony. Okay? Does your life reflect that melody? Do you have that rhythm in your steps through the Christian journey? Are you connected in a way that you have allowed, as we talked about way back on Action Wednesday, to allow our hearts to be changed, to be open to God purifying our hearts, our souls, our actions, who we are, that our steps might truly be a dance of God's, not a dance of of our own. Last Sunday, one of the songs that we sang was 
Jesus loves me. And I still love that song. It reminds me, one, of nostalgia. Two, it reminds me of my childhood. It reminds me of that simpleness of knowing, yes, Jesus does love me. I make mistakes. I'm a mess. And in the midst of that, Jesus loves me. Jesus continues to reach out for me. And that forgiveness and grace is still available to me. Do you believe that? Yes. Do you really believe that? Yes. So what does that mean about how you interact with others? What does that mean about how you treat others? What does that mean about how you treat yourself? God has blessed you and God has blessed me. God has given us so much, as verse 20 says, to give thanks for in the midst of all things. Will you dance that dance? Will you move in that type of a melody, that type of a harmony, where your footsteps actually make a difference? May God bless you in your dance. May God challenge you in your dance, and may all be for God's glory.